All right, uh, so uh, my name is Robert Clark. I'm CEO founder of uh, a little company we call Kind Robotics, which is a New York City-based uh, drone services company. So be prepared, the first couple of minutes will be a little bit of shameless self-promotion, just because we're still fairly early on. What we do is uh, hardware as a service. Um, we've kind of found that a lot of the consumer market, consumer dedicated uh, drone companies spend a lot of their time trying to sell people really expensive and complex hardware. And uh, quite frankly, not everyone is going to buy a drone because they're just really clever toys that once you crash them the first time, will just be a dust collection. Or whether you've got a wife, a girlfriend, or a husband, they will look at you with ire every single time they walk by it. All right, so what we do is uh, we offer kind of a, a mobile platform or a web-based platform where you can uh, one-time registration, pay-per-use, uh, specify an area of interest where you want this drone to be. Um, the drone flies there one, on its way there, it notifies you, say, hey, I am almost here. Um, what would you like it to do? There are pre-selected mission profiles that you can choose from. Um, some of the more interesting ones are stalk your girlfriend. Right? Not really, but <laughs> maybe someone will do that because uh, we kind of see this platform being an open API where you create the hardware and you create the infrastructure and give the users the, the ability to create different applications. There are only so many things that we ourselves can, as a company can think of that might be clever as use case, um, but I've seen a lot of more interesting thoughts come out of you know, just the random public at, at large. Um, so the drone kind of goes, executes a mission. Once, once it's done, it either uh, puts a, the uh, video, like a video file directly to the web browser or to your mobile app, or it puts it up on YouTube so you can have the data on demand. And once the mission's completed, the drone goes back to its landing platform, charges itself, and waits for the next, uh, next mission. And so, uh, so most drones, uh, for me, when I talk drones, I really mean multi-copters. Um, drones can really mean uh, re regular RC aircraft, but I usually think about multi-copters, specifically uh, you know, quadcopters, hexacopters, octocopters, and most of them are just a series of counter-rotating fans that you just use to push. Right? They're one of the simplest, simplest air vehicles that exist because there are no control surfaces, so no rudders, no tails, no elevators, no flaps. It's just a bunch of fans that just rotate in opposite direction to push this aircraft in all six degrees of freedom. Right? But that means that the drones are inherently aerodynamically unstable. Right? So you require a, com uh, a fly-by-wire system where computer is always co constantly updating the system. So it has to be real time with real refresh rates. Right? And so this is kind of what a uh, Basic hobbyist, you can go and buy this right now on the internet. Just spend a couple hundred dollars, and this will come to you in a box, and you can fly it around New York City and crash it into a building, and land on someone and kill them if you so choose. Please don't do that because that makes things really hard for me to start a company. Right? <laughs> but these things happen. Um, I know a couple of months ago there was a guy flying one around off his terrace in Midtown, crashed into a building near Grand Central, and almost landed on a guy's head. But these things can happen. So uh, basic drone systems just got an RC transmitter, receiver, some sort of autopilot, which is a computer control in the loop, GPS module, battery, and all this hardware stuff. All right, so my background is in aerospace and defense, so I know all this hardware stuff. Um, but I've been forced to learn Python because I like all this drone stuff. And so what Python, <coughs> I've been able to do with Python and drones are being able to use it for really, really interesting acrobatic maneuvers. So you can program uh, mission planning software, which you can download these off the internet. They're kind of a uh, dime, dime a dozen nowadays. You just download it off the internet. And most of it's written in uh, C++, but it uses uh, Python as a shell. And you can program it to perform mission scripts. So you can specify manually, you can specify waypoints like GPS coordinate locations. And you can have your little drone fly to these locations and do interesting things. Um, but with Python, you can make this a fully autonomous system, right? So you just write a little script, and the Python will run, and it'll direct your drone to do all of this automatically. All right, uh, some of the other things I've done is uh, I've used the Python to kind of expand the number of sensors that you can have on these open platforms. So 
Uh, one of these drones that come, uh, GPS isn't a very reliable system, right? So you kind of need to complement it with other sensory devices. Um, some of the good ones are sonar, optical flow, uh, you know, airspeed sensors. Those are just some of the good things that you can use Python for. And uh, I think I have an example in here. And uh, it's supported up to a Python 2.7, and it's implemented using Iron Python. So this is like a little camera. I stole this off of YouTube. This, so the drone just does a flip and a roll all at the same time. And that's run through a Python script. All right, so that's the type of thing you can do with it. Uh, let's see. Um, since this is a Python me thing, I figured I'd talk about some classes for a second. Now, like I said, my background is in hardware, so most of this stuff, I leave up to you guys. Right, but uh, this is just how it's uh, implemented, and you have the ability to add custom classes. Like, I'll, I'll get into some of these uh, variables later because they're actually really cool. And they actually excite me because I can use them to do interesting things. Right, but this is uh, just on the Python Im implementation. And let's see what's some of the really special commands, right? So the uh, current state variable uh, CS is one of the really interesting ones, but like the change mode, uh, for people who are not familiar with drones, like you have all these different flight modes. Like one of them in particular is like loiter. It'll just hold at, a, at, at an altitude and position, GPS position, and it'll just wait there, right? And so you can use a Python script to, to put a drone into a loiter mode from just a standard mission and it'll just stand there. Or you can also put it into a, a pattern where it circularly follows, a, just a, it holds a camera fixed on a, fixed a single point on the ground and it'll just stay there and it'll fly around in a circle and keep it fixed on that one point. Or you can node lock that to an object on the ground with some pattern recognition and if that pattern moves, then you can have the quadcopter, the drone, Follow that pot, follow that pattern on the ground. So, and that's all done through Python. Yes. Yeah, which is really cool. It's really really cool. Um, so again, you know, you wait for just like you wait for whatever, um, and then there are these different RC channels. So each each uh, drone has a number of control channels that it receive instructions over. Um, control anything from the uh, different modes and different motors, how they operate, what they're doing at any given time. <laughs> And so you can just send commands over those. Uh, like I said, one of the cool things I use Python for is for optical flow, right? So what this does is compensate for, compensates for the vehicle's motion while it's in the air. So it measures the uh, change of a physical feature on the ground, right? And it measures its relative x and y position. And as it moves, the new change in the pixel value. And I think I have the script for this in here somewhere, but hopefully I do. If not, uh, I can show it to you later. Um, and this is all run through Python. It's actually really, really interesting because this is, is great for like that example where I told you, 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 want the, uh, you want your drone, you want your quadcopter to just stay looking at a fixed point in space. Right? So it'll look, it, and if it moves because of the wind, it'll readjust its position because it's known where that physical feature on the ground has moved and it'll move itself back so that the pixel values kind of come, come for each other. And it, it's sensitive enough to know when it's been a single pixel, pixel motion or whether it's been multiple pixels, right? So it'll return a different value based on how many pixels the actual, phys the actual object has moved. Um, like I said, mission scripting. Like one of the uh, really cool methods from uh, the set variable is like these uh, you can control pitch, the yaw, the GPS status. And these are just like some of the examples. And the list is maybe not this tall, but it, it's pretty extensive. Um, you can monitor the battery voltage, the health. You can monitor the distance from the home. So these are some of the features and functions that kind of enable uh, what we're doing as a company to be able to allow the drones to figure out where the, its home location is, how far it's flown, how much battery it's used since to get from A to B, how much battery, calculate how much battery you'll need to return, um, determine what the uh, wind speeds are, wind directions, um, and all this is done inside Python, right? Uh, and that is us, 
um, Pan Robotics, that's really what we use Python for on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, like I said, you, everyone in the crowd probably knows the, the language considerably better than I do, but um, it's been a really boon to our operations and being able to you know, take a technology that you just pretty much buy off, off the shelf and be able to do something really, really interesting work with it. If you do actually want to see a copy of that role script, this is really small, but I've got really great eyes. I don't know about everyone else. Um, but this is how you execute that uh, role I showed you in the video. Right? And you just use some of the, the classes and the calls that I showed earlier. And it's actually pretty simple. It's pretty cool. So okay, questions? I feel appreciated now. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, very, very good question. Yes and unfortunately yes, but no at the same time. So the, it does a lot of frequency hopping, but you can GPS spoof a, your copter. Right? There's actually a guy who developed a drone stealing copter, so it'll fly around and GPS spoof all their, yeah, <laughs> your, your signal and steal your drone and hijack it for nefarious purposes. Um, so that's, the security is actually one of the big areas of concern we've we've identified that needs immediate um, research because that's really, really a big open-ended question. And if you want to see these, these types of systems in the national aerospace, then you kind of have to address that so that it doesn't kill someone. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you, you sort of touched on it a bit at the beginning, but um, what do you think the, so I guess my question is, I think it's cool, but how do, how does like the FAA and the city of New York feel about these things flying around? Well, um, it's kind of a catch-22. Like the, the technology is emerging, it's coming, right? And there are a lot of applications that can do real great public good, right? But at the same time, you have to balance the technology with public safety, right? And being able to find that, that balance is, is very critical, it's very key. So right now, the FAA has been charged by Congress to rewrite the regulations on um, how you integrate these systems into the national aerospace and how you m make sure that the public is safe and how they communicate and avoid each other from crashing, how they prevent from colliding into other buildings, um, other aircraft. And, but because, that, because of the huge potential benefits, like, they, it, will, it will be coming. It's, it is coming, right? And and it's not just taco copters, and it's not just <laughs> and it's not just Amazon Prime. Right? Not just taco copters. Yeah, not just taco copters. It's a big it's a big one, but not just I can taco get copters. Tacos from from a copter. from a drone. Yeah. So there's actual startup. There are two actually. There are two startups that are involved in. Now there's three. Yeah, <laughs> and doing a taco copter. Um, I don't know how you get it off the drone. Maybe it dive bombs the, the taco to you. Right? <laughs> Maybe it sends you a text saying, hey, your, your taco is here. You know, come outside. But. Great. So we've got time for maybe a couple more questions. So this extends this question, actually, yeah. regarding the FAA's restriction on these things. What about overall, what, regarding a program, do you pre-check a program as the FAA does have incredibly restrictive uh, yes. covenants? on how high Correct. your drone can fly, as well as speed, which again, for a drone, is gonna be a big deal. What, like say a model jet, it's a big deal. Yeah. And how do you guys address that? Because someone can easily say, well, you know what? I'm gonna just write this program, and I'm gonna have you guys run it, and it's gonna do its thing. And then I can just say, oh, it's an error. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for it to fly over JFK. And crash into an aircraft. That's, that's uh, important. So part of this, uh, integration process that's happening in, uh, and the discussion that's occurring right now is identifying um, one key technologies that are important to being able to do what, uh, a couple of things, uh, uh, what we call ground-based sense, sense and avoidance, um, which are key assets that we'll have around the city to be able to restrict the aerospace and communicate with the drones that are you know, up there. Um, one of the other ones is the, the, uh, defining dedicated keep-out zones and specifying rules and regulations for where and when these things can operate. 
So <laughs> right now it's kind of like no man's land. It's, the rules don't really exist. Um, the rules that are coming, however, are, are kind of incremental. There are some, there's plans for some near-term development and specifying you know, what technologies are necessary for this to be able to operate safely within national airspace. And those, uh, those near-term development goals are going to kind of be hashed out within the next uh, one to five years. And then there are midterm goals about, okay, now that we have identified the key enabling technologies and the key enabling uh, regulations, how do we then implement these into the, into the national aerospace? So it's an incremental process, but uh, I think by partnering with the industry, with the FAA and through industry, you know, we're gonna kinda get to a point where you know, it's mutually beneficial for, for both parties. I just had a quick question regarding the sensors that you're using, a lot of the yeah. digital tracking stuff seems to be more hardware. Yes. Um, are you investigating using, say, OpenCV or more Python as digital libraries? Uh, drones, and how do you see the higher, more complex computation? Oh, that's well. That's kind of like two questions. So yes, I have. It is on our development timeline. Um, just because I am generally a slave to hardware because that's my background and that's what I'm familiar with but it is something we've identified on the development timeline as we go from building up the, the business and going through proof of concept so you know within the next 18 months or so that's something that we're looking at second question is then how do you handle uh, the more computationally intensive um, task for for these drones and one of those is uh, we are right now identifying kind of two different things that we're looking at. The first of which is whether or not we can um, take some of the heavy computation off the drone itself and stick it in the cloud, uh, or um, part of our, the, it wasn't in there, part of our approach are these remotely located uh, drone landing platforms and stations, and we are looking at taking all the heavy computation and making the drone itself as dumb as possible, and all it needs to re receive are know simple high level instructions from and having the the uh, charging base or the pod or whatever um, be responsible for doing most of the, the hard heavy lifting um, because the more that we can offload off the drone side the more capable they are because right now one of the key limitations to the technology itself is being able to carry its load carrying capacity because battery technology just doesn't exist and one of the unfortunate things that you know Jeff Bezos or Amazon don't tell people is that the technology to enable these, these uh, systems to be a part of your life every day just do not physically exist yet. Right? But they're coming, right? but not for a few more years.